Out here again at CCW Safe's range with Joseph Jr. Rakaza. <laughs> That's cool. Going through some like little tweaks that we can do to get better. I want to ask you, Grip 101. Yeah. Grip 101. So we're shooting this beautiful Beretta. You guys know I'm a Beretta aficionado. So I like Buona you. giornata. Yes. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. One of the most beautiful blasters on the planet. Does it matter if I'm shooting this or a different gun? Does the components of the grip change? No. I, I would say a, hardly, a hard no on that one. The reason being is that um, for me, I have one consistent grip and I've, only, I've always used that grip and it was a 1911 style grip and it just kind of uh, molded into some of the other particular guns out there like a striker fire. The only negative to my grip is that since I use levers like safety, external safeties as part of my um, grip and stuff like that. You're right? saying the actual levers, the yes. control, the control surfaces the external on surfaces, the gun. I use that as part of my recall management as my grip. If I'm given a striker fire gun that has a say uh, what is that called? A slight stop right there, I will end up riding that with my thumb. So it becomes a negative on that sense per se. So all I would have to do is move my thumb over to actually fix that and let my gun run to slide lock but however every time I've ever had to do that in Fletzy or any kind of school in a law enforcement school or anything like that every time I've had to try to move my my, my, th my thumb it greatly affected my shooting so I'm I would rather focus on 99% of the th times that I'm doing good as opposed to the 1% of the time that my, my gun may go slide lock and I'm hoping if I'm doing everything correct I never need to go slide lock so that's so that's one the so reason for me it's a hard no that my grip will always be the same in regards to whatever platform that I'm using I'll be mean, obviously some aesthetic and all that stuff I guess maybe what I'm digging at is the are the principles of how you're gripping the gun changing no it's not really changing okay. it's just all the same leverage and friction breaker down for us so basically to me leverage and friction is the two principles that I go off of it so the, uh, the biggest thing for me is getting high off the gun and everyone kind of knows that second thing for me is to be able to create as much friction as high as I possibly can so the one thing is I want to put my I'm a thumbs forward type of gripper guy right so I'd like to put my thumbs forward and one of the things that I like to test is I want to be able to go to a compressed high ready I want to look down on my gun and I want to be able to see that my th my index finger that's indexed off the, the frame of the gun and my thumb is about even with the slide as you can see it right there right so if I bring it in together you can see my slide uh, my, my index of uh, my trigger finger and my thumb is about even with each other when I see this that means that person wasn't able to take advantage of the height of the gun and how high they can actually put that thumb and that meat onto that gun to create more leverage and create more friction onto the gun. So when I look at that every time I have a good a grip I know that most of the time either my left thumb is a little bit further than my trigger finger or it's at least equal to it the second it's a little bit further back I know I'm a little bit too low on the gun so a lot of people will hold it like this and you can see this in the old school way people will used to do this you can see how much space that they missed out over here so with that said throw this meat part of your hand as high as you possibly can throw that thumb up there right that I have I happen to have a takedown lever maybe it's used as a gas pedal and that's basically my grip right there so basically the way I apply pressure though is slightly different than most um, um, I used to, sh I shoot a lot, so shoot a lot meaning 20,000 dollars a year or something like that. I used to get um, arthritis, uh, tendonitis here and there. And if I can actually face this way, there's, this is, this is, this is a, a safe range, no one is up here. So I'm going to show you guys some of the things that I change in my grip in order for me to be able to um, adjust uh, the, the tendonitis that I was having from shooting a lot of rounds in a very short period of time. One of the things that I started to do was when I shot the gun, I used to grip it right here. And when I shot this muscle right here, would end up hitting that particular um, gun. So I started looking and talking to guys, body mechanic, physiologists, and stuff like that. And what's the strongest point of our fingers and hands? And how do I create leverage? I was getting a lot of tendonitis when I was shooting in a lot of rounds in a short period of time. So I started going to doctors and guys that were smarter than me. And I said, hey, how do I actuate? How do I create these things? What are the strongest part of my hands and stuff like that? Creating leverage and stuff like that. So they said they're creating leverage to ex expand the points and be able to create some leverage. So the furthest two points of my hand are my thumb, my pinky. And also that just so happens to be how you open jars is your thumb and your pinky. They're those are the two strongest parts of your hand and so I said all right that works out with the grip I think and if I started thinking about it uh, opening a jar that's where we open and close and with that so I started looking at it in my my hand and going how do I add and create that my thumb is not necessarily pointing I can't push that 
but my thumb has always used leverage. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. But instead of using the middle part of my hand as my grip, I started using my pinky to pull into the gun. And so I started to play with this a little bit by using just the pinky, because I used to try to shoot one hand like this, uh, right, to not influence the gun and all that stuff. But then once I started talking to some of the doctors and some of these guys smarter than me, I just wanted to adjust the grip and see what it felt like. So I gripped in the bottom of my finger a little bit more as I shot the gun. And what I realized was by filming myself and watching myself on camera is that by punching out and then holding on to, you can see the, my, my forearm, if I grip with my middle finger, you can see this particular muscle that's tensing up, that's causing a lot of that pull on that tendon. But if I relax that ever so slightly, but continue to have the same exact tension on my bottom, bottom fingers, I can relax the middle finger and still have the same exact tension on these bottom fingers. And by doing that, I'm able to still manage some sort of recoil. So I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna do that and literally let this relax. And then let me see what that would look like. So I started to dry fire that because that's totally different than what I used to grip. And I started to implement the same exact thing left hand goes into the gas pedal or takedown lever and the bottom part of my pinky is the one that pulls onto my gun so I'm doing like a pinch movement right so a pinch movement towards the gun and dropping that sights on target allowing for my my, my pinky and my middle finger just kind of be loose and relax on there and start shooting and I wanted to pay attention to the way my gun cycled and all this stuff and it really didn't affect much it's just changing the technique and the pressure you can see where I add the pressure on there this is where the pressure is this is just getting crushed with the other hand uh, so I started playing with that it didn't affect the performance of the gun it really didn't affect it just it was just a conscious thought at the time so all I knew was that I just had to do a lot more reps before the conscious thought starts to go away. By doing that, since I've changed my grip, had any kind of issue with my um, tendonitis. So just to reiterate, with your dominant hand, may I? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. You are really applying force with the pinky. Yep. And this is kind of almost sympathetic reflex. This one I can kind of almost relax mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. And it's a weird sensation at first because it was a conscious thought to like squeeze down there and then obviously my thumb locks into place. What happens when you're shooting strong hand only? That's the same exact thing. So, because I heard you say that you were getting some good grip pressure over these fingers yes. with that hand. So what happens though? Nothing? No negative No negative zero. outcome? Yeah, seriously. Do you same. feel that you're gripping more? I, get, I do feel like I'm gripping more, but it's the more is just here and the same thing. That's my grip right there. It's just, that thing's almost kind of loose, right? But it's it's just there, it's hanging out. But really, this is the one that you can't move at all. Do you remember Dr. Middlebrooks? That no, name ever come up? familiar. Middlebrooks does something. Dr. Did a program called Fist Fire back in the early '90s. Okay. He's from uh, Virginia. I mean, he was a pretty high-level Ipsic shooter, and then he had some health issues, and he kind of like dropped off. He used the term pinky power in like the 90s. And this was something he talked about. And huh. People said, no, you're crazy. In fact, I have a friend, Sang, who's super strong. And Sang's got like these big, strong yeah. hands that he said to people, may I? Yeah. He's like, you know, most of this is happening up high. Look, I can just let my pinkies go loose. Sure, yeah. So it's, what's really interesting to me is how you, your build, your physique, your overworking of the muscles, you had to find a way to get it to work. Yeah. And you're accentuating that, yeah. which DR did, yeah. due to a health issue. It was a health issue for, for sure. For him yeah. as well. And then saying equal strength and kind of build as you does the opposite. Like he's doing a bunch of stuff. Granted, he's not a world champion. He's sure, a good shooter, sure. he's an instructor, yeah. um, great guy. Physically, he'd probably beat you up in hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a ninja. He's like a legit. He's a ninja too, black belt. Damn it, Sang. I guess this is what I'm looking at. So you're a world champion. DR was a high level on a national stage. And you'll hear different people fixate on different things. Like when I ask students what two things come to mind, everybody says high and tight. Yeah. But yeah. like, what, what does, does tight mean? mean? Yeah. What's like, where are you tight? And like, so you're applying, so you've got the gas pedal here. Yes. Yeah. So your Beretta, mine don't have these. I kind of let my thumbs float, but you're actually imparting some pressure in any inboard? gun that I have I go more of a 45 degree angle inward in any gun that I've ever shot so if you can see that there he's got the uh take down lever, the, the take down lever though has this a, is this is platform. a little extra the gas pedal which like some race guns yes, will have yes, and yes, stuff you do, see yeah. that I'm always concerned that as soon as this hand comes off the gun, I'm gonna be getting some of this shit without yeah. me pushing. So how do you how do you mitigate that? It's right. the way I pull the trigger. Cause now um, if I'm doing things at speed, 
my grip is whenever my grip goes away like in, uh, three days before the world championship i had this big big old accident that happened and i cut my hand up pretty good i sliced my hand up as you can see there mm -hmm. right it's a pretty big slice with, yeah what um, the heck was that wide open and so i couldn't grip the gun and i remember shooting the same exact drill that we were running i couldn't hit the targets that i was hitting anymore because i didn't have the grip that i had right so basically that story the reason why i tell that story is because the one thing that i had to induce more and ma and, and be a little bit more uh, attentive to was the way i pulled and actuated my trigger so i had to be a little bit more perfect with my trigger because I no longer had the grip. So it's the same thing, right? Whenever I'm shooting two hands on a gun and I'm running this trigger, whatever, whatever, whenever I go to the, to the strong hand, I'm took, taking away majority of my grip, 50% of my grip. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my trigger as well. So anytime I'm ever shooting strong hand, weak hand, support hand, whatever, since we have it in matches, reload into strong hand, all I do is constantly just prep and work the trigger as best as I can. So no longer am I trying to like shoot it fast. I'm just going to let my trigger run the gun and dictate my pace, basically. That makes sense. Okay. So that's why. So it doesn't affect my accuracy. But if I'm if I am shooting still fast, one hand, two hand, right, whatever. And it's going back to that also. When I was used to holding the gun with these two tr trigger fingers right here, right, it didn't make me a worse shooter. I didn't. I never said that, right. This didn't make me a better shooter neither. Going down here, I just allowed for me to be able to have longevity and not have to have to face injuries year after year mm -hmm. after year. I've definitely of having, battled that. Doing this, right, instead of having to take breaks, they didn't make me any better. It just my biggest thing was it didn't change the performance and the characteristics of my gun in regards to recoil management and stuff like that. And you can actually see. I don't know if you can see this. The callus in my hand. That callus is when I air gun. And this is the callus when I actually have the gun on my hand because that's the same pressure. And you can see there's no other callus up here or nothing like that, except for that. That's where my little pinky, I mean, my, my little finger holds. But the, this callus right here is because that's how much pressure I add with my pinky as I'm gripping the gun. So that real, little bit of movement right there, there's no callus here. There's no callus here. The only other callus is this because it's constantly moving. But the only callus that you see on the dark spot on my hand is that pinky pressure that I've added and then it's consistent when I'm air gunning the gun right that same exact callus goes in the bottom of my hand as if I was holding uh, without holding the gun but that same exact callus that I have right here will shift there when I have a gun in my hand because I'm just because when I was trying to learn this I only wanted to have one pressure so even when I was air gunning it I was doing the same exact pressure as you can see this is pretty soft and those things are pretty stout out there and I'm pinching this thing in so by changing that around it on constantly doing it whenever I pointed the gun I made sure to focus on those bottom half of my fingers it allowed for me to be able to change the way I grip the gun and then now I no longer have to have actually uh, it's been eight at least nine years now to have at least the last time I've ever had um, any kind of tendonitis, and I shoot quite a bit. I've only ramped up year after year. And you work out a ton. I do work out a ton. Where you're so. gripping and lifting Correct. and yanking yeah. and cranking. And pulling up also. I pull yeah. up on my pull up. I no longer do this. I do a lot more of my pinky as well. How much, so contextual, right? Some little lady like the woman we had out here yeah. today, if you said grip it hard, hard for her might feel like nothing. Sure. For, or, or you might say all the way and you might break your own fingers like i have a pretty strong grip so yeah. like for me i don't have to i don't feel i'm you know like over gripping yeah, yeah. or or maybe like i shouldn't say over cuz that denotes some known level <laughs> i i don't um feel like i'm gripping to the point that it's like all my juice yeah so like if i take this gun in my right hand and i come here and could you put your left hand on me yeah what did you just do what did you just do to me i just wanted to check I just wanted to check what kind of tension you oh, had on okay. there. I just yeah. want to so feel. You had a good set tension on it. I just want to feel. So that's that's it. Yeah. So it didn't feel to me. I felt what I felt was like a good firm tension. I it think wasn't. It firm wasn't quivery, to hard, but not like super hard. Yeah. That's it wasn't like oh, you're hurting no, me. No. 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 I think a lot of people mistake that by going 40 here, 60. My right hand is pretty stout. It's firm to hard. This is also firm to hard. Like, I, I don't know how to explain that for anyone, but it's it's out there. I'm gripping the gun, not letting the gun recoil or do whatever. Could we see what that looks like in, in recoil? Yeah, 100%. All right, so you're just gonna do a little mag dump here and we're gonna kind of catch and see what is happening. Okay. On you, sir. Send a couple more, will ya? How many rounds does that Beretta hold? I don't, <laughs> it's got a few more in it. Ultimately, grip is a technique. There's a myriad of different ways of doing it. 
the biggest thing about it is you got to make it work for you. Uh, to me, gripping hard and uh, firm to hard is one key, right? Figure out how it is. Depending on your grip size, your body composition, your strength, you're going to have to make that work for you how it is. Some of those things that I just showed is my technique that allowed for me to be able to be successful in what I do. The one thing that you can add to your shooting that I've seen enhance 95% or 99% of the shooters out there, no matter what their technique is, is a simple wrist twist technique basically not an elbow technique where your elbows go up you punch out and you're twisting your wrist in where you're increasing that pressure to the top of the gun and that's why you probably see a lot of my callus down here because as i twist it in my pinky is holding on for dear life to be able to hold on to the bottom of the gun by adding that literally i call it like a 50 percent discount to your muzzle rise the pattern becomes a lot more linear up and down and the like when my gun's just going up and down the lack of side to side and that's why i push into my gun and i twist into it because i want to add that little torque that a last little bit of torque to the gun allows for me to be able to do it so if you just add that to your to your current technique right now that will probably enhance your shooting already and your grip technique already again like i said follow the principles of grip and le i mean leverage and friction everything else just a technique from there on out there are so many discussions on grip it's kind of almost a expression of one's art yeah how can somebody obtain metrics off targets to help them assess this stuff. So you've kind of gone through everything, gave your synopsis. How can they assess as they're growing? Cause it's yeah. like, well, it feels good. Yeah, so to me, the way to do it is you gotta shoot it fast. When you're shooting fast, the more grip is more important and becomes more of a priority than your trigger, right? So gripping, being able to grip, getting your gun to cycle predictably back on target. So to me, you gotta shoot targets up close. That's always the metric. And look, looking at target and shooting two really fast shots, understanding where the second shot is. Don't wait for your size, just run the gun as fast as you possibly can. And at that close distance, maybe let's start with three yards, right? And understanding where the first shot versus where the second shot's landing, and then tweak your grip according to that and seeing where you can and bring those two gun uh, two shots together a lot of it a lot of people are just lazy letting letting they're riding the recoil as opposed to driving the gun back on target if you're just lighting the recoil you're gonna have shots that go up skyrocketing towards the head area but if you drive that gun and physically drive that gun back onto the target not necessarily push it whatever you'll figure this out as you run it you'll start to see that the, the two shots starts to dwindle apart the, the separation starts to dwindle apart and get closer and closer when you get about two inches or so from the splits of your shot to shot and you're still running the gun as fast as you can that means you've already started a pretty good grip you do that enough times at close distance you'll immediately build that build that feeling and that structure behind it and you just carry that structure from three yards to five yards now you test it and do the same exact test at five yards do the same exact test at seven yards and then eventually you'll run out of room you, you'll figure out that i've maxed out my limit of my capability currently i can't run the gun as fast at this distance and that becomes your control range versus your attack speed range and that then that's another topic for another day that's come to jj's class <laughs> I hope this kind of helps you guys a little bit, especially as we dig around on the internet. Be careful of who you take information from. Uh, don't learn how to put a starter in your car from a guy that says, well, I've never done this, but let's go. World champion, probably a good spot to start. You've trained some people around the world that are some of the best war fighters on the planet. That's meaningful. They come to you for that. I appreciate that you would spend your time with us and I enjoy visiting with you from our friends from CCW Safe this past weekend. It's also, it's really good seeing you too. It's been a while. Last time I saw you, we were in Vegas and that was, you know, fast times and all that. All that cocaine. Yes, gosh. Crazy. <laughs> How do people find you? JJRacazaTraining.com and as well as email my wife, Jessica.Racaza at Yahoo.com or just find me on Instagram, JJRacaza. You've got like a little sign off. I've heard it. What is it? Sign off. Yeah, I just heard you a minute ago. You did a little sign off. Oh, what is it's it? JJRacaza signing off with CCW Safe and Kerry Trainer today. Oh, I thought you like had one. No. Bang, bang. See, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? <laughs>